This time, class, I will discuss each approaches and requirements modeling. We will start with scenario-based modeling. Uh, we have learned that scenario-based impacts um, elements, sorry, depicts how the user interacts with the system and the specific sequence of activities that occur as the system is used. Uh, meaning, um, the software engineers or the analysts need to analyze the data that they have gathered in the previous activities. We also need to analyze the various ways that users will interact with the systems. Um, these are explicitly mentioned by the users. We also need to read between the lines and understand their frustrations and experience with the system. Um, there is also uh, in external systems um, who can be a good source of information or a recipient. Those are third-party systems. If we understand how user, um, how how end users and the other actors want to interact with the system, our engineers will be uh, will be better able to properly characterize requirements and build meaningful analysis and design models. The tools commonly used to model user scenarios are use cases, this one, activity diagrams, and we also have the swim lane diagrams, and lastly, the user stories. The first three, this, uh, these three tools, are part of the Unified Modeling Language, or the UML. When we say UML, UML is a standardized modeling language enabling developers to specify, visualize, construct, and document artifacts of a software system. Um, we also have user stories. I believe we discussed this one already in our Agile process model, but I will try to discuss it again later. So let's start understanding first the first tool in UML, which is what we call use case. A use case is simply an aid to defining what exists outside the system, by the way, those are the actors, and what should be performed by the system. So actually, that is our use case. This is based from Ivar Jacobson. These are the elements that we need to consider if, uh, if we need to create a use case. Um, our use case should have an actor. Next, our use case should have an activities or actions performed by an actor. So basically, those are the scenarios. We need to have a preconditions before a use case is initiated. Fourth, we need to have a trigger that invokes or gets the use case started. And lastly, of course, we need to have an exceptions. Take note, use case is a visualized or use case is visualized using a use case diagram. Later on, I will show you an example of a use case diagram so that you will um, you will understand um, deeply regarding the use case diagram. Okay. So um, I have a literature here from Ken Worthy in 1997. I know that it's actually past dated, but um, this is still um, this is still applicable even though that it's still uh, it was published last 1997. Um, Ken Worthy created a list or steps on how to write a use case. First, we need to identify who is going to be using the software. So basically, those are the actors. Next, pick one of those users. After picking, we need to define what the user wants to do using the software. Each thing the user does using the software becomes a use case. Okay, so basically, um, uh, those are the scenarios or those are the features needed for the system. Number four, for each use case or for each feature or function, decide on a normal course of events or scenarios when the user, um, the user is using the software. Fifth, describe the basic course and the description for the use case. 
describe it in terms of what the use, uh, user does and what the system does in response that the user should be aware of. Six, with the basic course in, is described, consider alternate courses of events and add those to extend the use case. Um, the extend, uh, we will have a discussion regarding that one, regarding this one in the next slides. Lastly, look for commonalities among the use cases. Extract these and note them as common course um, common course use cases. Okay, uh, repeat the step two to seven for all other users. Again, we, need, we can repeat um, steps two to seven for all, all other users. And take note by the way, class, the exemption, uh, sorry, the inception and elicitation task in requirements engineering will provide you with the information you need to begin writing the use cases. Okay, that's actually, that's the reason why um, uh, we have done all of that activities before so that we can have that one implemented by using our model here in scenario-based modeling. So again, we can we can use use case as one of the UML available or one of the tools available for scenario-based modeling. A good system example so that you can understand more about use case is an enrollment system. I believe that you're all familiar with this one, right? <laughs> Take note that we will still follow the suggested steps of Ken Worthy. First, uh, we will identify all the potential users of the system. I only provided seven here. I only provided seven, but then again, um, there are still more, but I only um, listed seven actors here. So we have the student, the teacher, the advisor, the registrar, the clerk, the cashier, and also the bank validation service. An actor is not a specific person, but rather a rule that a person or a device plays within a specific context. An actor calls, um, calls on the system to deliver one of its services. It's not necessarily na yung actor natin ay dapat tao. So it could be a service or it could be a, um, um, it could be a, um, service or it could be a functionality as well for your system. Okay, so this time um, let's go back to number three of Ken Worthy, the steps he provided. Uh, when we say number three, I believe this one. Define what the user wants to do using the software. Each thing the user does using the software becomes a use case. So if we already understood the number three step of um, Ken Worthy, um, we can understand the use case this time. So each thing the user does using the software becomes a use case. Take note on that. What would be the things the student can do to the system? Um, there are still many things the student can do, but they only provided three. Okay, first we have student enlist classes to enroll. Uh, we also have students enroll enlisted classes. We also have student pays enrollment fees. But then again, I only provided three, but um, based on um, Ken Worthy's, um, Ken Worthy's um, work, um, actually we can um, create more. Okay, um, these are our potential use cases. Okay, these are our potential use cases. By the way, um, Alistair um, Cockburn um, characterizes a use case as a contract for behavior. Um, the contract defines the way in which an actor uses a computer-based system 
to accomplish some goal. In essence, a use case captures the interactions that occur between producers and consumers of information and the system itself.